A busy night for Albuquerque firefighters. That's what we start with. About 11 last night, this fire started at a vacant store to strip mall. It's at 1128 San Mateo Southeast. The crew saw smoke and flames when they rolled up, launching immediately on the defensive. They were able to keep it from spreading, and they have not said what caused it. About an hour earlier, a cigarette being smoked while oxygen was in use sparked a fire at this home in the 9600 block of Robin Northeast. Smoke and flames were visible when crews arrived. They helped an elderly woman and her daughter get out and within 10 minutes snuffed the fire. It was contained to the living room. The whole house had smoke damage, though. The daughter suffered minor burns and was taken to the hospital. Fire crews say, remember, remind your loved ones no smoking if they are using oxygen. New this morning, the feds think the nuclear dump fire at WIP was preventable. At a community meeting in Carlsbad last night, a Department of Energy official previewed the findings of a scathing report to be released today. The report says a 29-year-old truck that caught fire a half mile underground at the waste isolation pilot plant near Carlsbad was improperly maintained and operating without an automatic fire suppression system. The report will also detail a number of deficiencies in emergency training and responses to the recent back-to-back -back incident at the WIP. An investigation into the Valentine's Day radiation leak a month ago today that contaminated 17 workers is expected in a few weeks. Now, in the wake of that report, the WIP manager, Barack Sharif, here is being demoted by URS. That's the private company that runs the plant. Mr. Sharif's new assignment is to look for places to store WIP waste while the repository recovers from the fire and the radiation leak. URS is naming a former nuclear manager from Los Alamos National Lab, Bob McQuinn, as the new boss at the WIP. Well, at 503, we have learned a six-figure taxpayer-funded study on the future of the NFL right here in New Mexico does not exist. You know, the study all got started during Governor Bill Richardson's administration when he wanted to pursue the idea of bringing professional football to the land of enchantment. Richardson got lawmakers to spend $166,000 on this study to see if New Mexico could support an NFL franchise. A high-profile California consultant company was paid to conduct that study, but after it was paid for, it was never publicly discussed again. News 13 asked the state for a copy of it and got a surprising answer. It appears that there was never a published report. There was only an, an oral report that was presented. And when the governor's circle was told that the state did not have the population, corporate sponsors, or cash needed to get this going, the Richardson administration quietly moved on. Well, we all know there are certain places where you cannot pull over outside the airport, but an Albuquerque woman says one Sunport officer was out of line with her 82-year-old disabled mother when the mother tried to get into a vehicle at the wrong curb. 82-year-old Grace Schmidt and her daughter, Deborah Stone, were at the Sunport on Monday. Stone got her luggage in her fiancé's car, who had gone to pick him up, and then the couple tried to get the 82-year-old with her luggage, wheelchair, oxygen tank, and all into the caregiver's van. Well, that van was stopped in the road used by shuttles. That's when an aviation officer told them to move in an uncalled for manner. One of the officers had his hand on his hip by his gun and was yelling at my mother, telling her she needed to sit back down. A Sunport spokesperson says APD is investigating how officers handled the situation. A soon to be disappearing federal law could have a big effect on air travel and business right here in New Mexico. It is called the Wright Amendment and it basically forces Southwest Airlines to land planes at the Sunport before they can continue west to Phoenix, Los Angeles, Las Vegas and other places. When the law expires this fall, the city in New Mexico will be without its protection for the first time since 1980 been a benefit to Albuquerque in that, you know, those those flights had to stop in an adjoining state to go to go west. Matt Grubbs is on special assignment with a look at how Albuquerque is trying to keep the flights landing and taking off from the Sunport and all the business that goes with them. Check it out tonight at 9 o'clock on Two Casa or see his story anytime at KRQE.com. Well, a whole new industry and tax base has cropped up in Colorado, and it's doing a booming business. And a whole lot of people looking for work showed up at this unique job fair there yesterday. The line of job seekers wrapped around the block at the marijuana job fair that was held in Denver. 
Jared White from Silver City here drove 11 hours to get there. He says he would like to be a bud tender, which is the marijuana equivalent of a bartender. It'd be nice to be a bud tender, but whatever they want to throw at me and get my foot in the door. Pot providers are also hiring computer techs, accountants, and growers. Organizers plan to have more marijuana job fairs. We'll keep you posted. One of Albuquerque's hottest fishing spots could soon have a new name in honor of an old friend of KR Kiwi and New Mexico fishing icon Bob Jardine. City Councilors Brad Winters and Isaac Benton are sponsoring a resolution to rename the Tingley Beach Catch and Release Pond after him. For decades, Jardine encouraged New Mexicans to enjoy the great outdoors using his outdoor adventures hunting and fishing show here on KR Kiwi and call-in shows on 94 Rock. Girding died last December. The resolution will be introduced at next Monday's City Council meeting. Well, it is that time of year when New Mexicans show their colors and root for the home team. And in this case, that would be a woof, woof, woof. KRQE's Lawrence Gilligan is with the UNM Lobos at the Mountain West Conference Tournament in Las Vegas. Coming up, he's got highlights from the game last night, plus a preview of the game tonight and pull what other teams are saying about the pack on the court and even Governor Susana Martinez donned her cherry and silver gear as she headed to Vegas to see the games yesterday. She even had a few comments about the Lobos head coach Craig Neal and how she thinks he's doing so far. They, the team really loves him. They really um, want him as their coach. He's a good guy. He's a, an excellent coach. Um, so I think he's doing a fantastic job. Well, the governor's visit does have a dual purpose. She's also in Nevada raising money for her reelection campaign, and that is what is paying for her trip there.